We're at Hideaway Pizza. Ever wonder where they get their food from? I'm gonna show you. My name is Alex and I share my learning adventures. In past adventures, you have seen us at places like picking strawberries, j and Mushroom Farms, a tour of the creamery at Tillamook, Miller Pecans, and more. It's awesome to see where all of these foods come from. But how do they get to our favorite restaurants? Consider our lunch today, a simple salad and a cheese pizza. All of the ingredients to make this came from different places. And don't forget all the extra items like sweeteners, pepper flakes, salt, mints, crackers, and more. Even non-food items like straws and napkins. Even pizza boxes. I'm going to take another pizza home. Then consider all the other things on their menu. If all of these products came direct from their suppliers by truck, the restaurant would be unloading trucks all day. The flour truck. The tomato truck. The lettuce truck. The feta truck. The olive truck. The truck with straws. The cheese truck. And on and on with lots more trucks. And that is just the physical part. Imagine keeping up with the schedules, billing, and communications with all of those different suppliers. A restaurant would go crazy trying to keep it up with it all. There's got to be a better way. There is. And we went to Benny Keith Company to find out what it is. We're at Benny Keith's in Oklahoma City. You won't believe what's inside. This is my dad's friend, Lance Wheeler. He took us on a tour. This warehouse is 500,000 square feet. That is 12 football fields of space. There are eight different temperature zones, including chilled, produce, eggs, freezer, and dry goods. Avocados, got them. Lemons, yep. Sonic tater tots, check. Sonic cups, yes. Tillamook ice cream, yes sir. Jane and Farms mushrooms, you know it. Wagyu brisket, Oh my! Oysters just out of the ocean. Maytag blue cheese? Dad says it's really supposed to be blue. Highway crust mix? Of course. You will find all of that and over 15,000 other items here in the warehouse. Before we take a closer look, let's take a moment to back up and look at the big picture. Ben E. Keith is a food service distribution company. Here is a simplified example of how it works. Let's suppose I grow great potatoes in Idaho, perfect for making french fries. And let's suppose that Alex has a premium burger restaurant and he wants to hand cut the best potatoes to make french fries for his customers. But Alex doesn't just have one location, he has 30. Like we said earlier, it's not efficient to send one truck from Idaho to stop at each location and drop off a few bags of potatoes. Instead, the truck can go from Idaho to a Ben E. Keith warehouse. The whole truckload will get unloaded there. A truck with beef for Alex's fresh, never frozen patties can do the same. Tomatoes, same. Onions, same. Everything Alex needs to serve his menu can do the same. Ben E. Keith not only takes in all of those truckloads of goods, they break them down into the quantities each of Alex's burger locations needs and then delivers them to each location. Now each burger location gets one regular delivery with exactly what it needs. Not only is it more efficient goods delivery for the supplier and the restaurant, it also simplifies billing and payment. 
each supplier bills Benny Keith instead of the 30 different locations. And each location gets one bill from Benny Keith rather than the dozens and dozens of bills from each original supplier. This model works if the restaurant has 30 locations, just one location, or hundreds of locations. Customers include single-owner restaurants and chains like Five Guys, Sonic, Raising Cane's, and Hideaway Pizza. Maybe someday there really will be an Alex Burgers. They also serve schools, healthcare institutions, and gas stations. Easy, right? Not so fast. Let's take a look at some of the things required to make this happen. As you enter the warehouse, you see the main charging station for the pallet jacks. And you start to get a sense of the scale of what is going on. They have 115 pallet jacks. They are battery operated because they don't want to exhaust fumes around the food. Here are some other numbers of interest. It's not just the huge floor space. It, it's also tall with about 40 feet high storage racks. They have 53 dock doors for loading and unloading. On average, they receive 80,000 cases a day and shape and ship 80,000 cases a day out. That is almost 30 million cases per year. The current in-house inventory of product is $54 million. They operate 125 delivery trucks that log a toy total of 5.5 million miles a year. They have 500 employees. They operate 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Benny Keith serves 16 states total and 9 of those states out of OKC. Throughout the day, the facility goes through four phases. Around 4.30 in the morning, they begin receiving products into the warehouse. The next phase is replenishing inventory where they rotate product and place the newly received products in their correct storage location. The next phase begins about 4 in the afternoon where products are systematically picked to fulfill outgoing orders. The final phase is loading picked orders onto the outgoing trucks, after which the process starts all over again. There are two dock areas, one chilled and one not. This is the chilled dock. This is the cooler. It's 36 degrees. <laughs> Watching the trucks be unloaded is like a choreographed dance. Lift operators swiftly, safely, and methodically unload trucks and stage the product so that it can be put away. Products are also inspected and any damaged or quality compromised products are put in a specially designated area away from everything else so that it can be properly disposed of. This is the freezer. It will snow inside here. It will snow inside the building. <laughs> it's zero degrees in here. Actually, it was about negative nine. I could see my breath. Parts of it are dark because the lights are controlled by motion sensors. So only the areas that are being worked in are lit. This room is for eggs. Small eggs, large eggs, all kinds of eggs. They keep the eggs separate for safety reasons. This is a ripening bay. As you can imagine, timing the delivery of produce around ideal ripening is important. At home, you might put bananas in a paper bag to speed up the ripening. This room does the same effect on a bigger scale. The temperature is held at 68 degrees and ethylene gas the same gas that produce puts off naturally when ripening, is applied. In the protein room, meats are segregated by type. Beef is with beef, chicken is with chicken, pork is with pork. This is just a small part of the safe food handling practices that are incorporated into daily operations. Check out all of these potatoes for five guys.
That's a lot of French fries. Some produce likes it slightly warmer. This is the tomato room. It's 55 degrees in here. That's how the tomatoes like it. Other produce like mushrooms are stored in here too. Check out these big portobellos from J&M Farms. And look how beautiful this assortment pack of J&M Farms mushrooms is. This is the dairy room. Hard cheeses, soft cheeses, milk, yogurt, sour cream, low fat, full fat, whatever dairy you need. They don't just have chocolate milk. They have it in many different sizes and many different containers. This huge section is for items that do not have to be refrigerated, but it still has some climate controls. You could find things like flowers, sugars, oils, canned goods, sauces, peanut butter, Nutella, chips, and lots of other food goods, like dried seaweed. You can also find non-edible goods, like cups, napkins, toothpicks, and takeout boxes. Do these look familiar? Look at this huge machine. They call it the robot and they have more than one. Not all of the products they have are, are in big enough quantities to get a standard storage bay. Those products get put on a table and from there they are automatically identified, sized, and moved to a storage slot. Here it is moving some cases out of the queue and moving it to an open storage bay. The computer automatically keeps an inventory and location database for all of the items. And there are a lot of items. When orders are queued for shipment, the robot's computer is notified and those items are automatically pulled and loaded onto the table for picking. It's like an automated filing system for food service products. Okay, that was a lot. But believe me, it really was just a quick tour because there was so much to see. We didn't go down even 10% of all the aisles. But our tour isn't done yet. There is still more going on and more to see. Managing the flow of food items is a huge job, but there's even more going on. Remember all of those pallet jacks? They have an in-house mechanic shop just to keep them all maintained and repaired. Doing this in-house minimizes downtime and keeps this critical equipment rolling. The trucks and trailers are mission critical as well and need regular maintenance and repairs too. So Benny, Keith, has a separate facility on site just for that. They purchase six new trucks every six months. In here, the new trucks are outfitted to be in the fleet. They also come back for regular maintenance, safety inspections, and repairs, both big and small. You've got to be able to get two trucks in here at a time. Each trailer is 53 feet long. Trucks that are new. Yep, so we can get two, four, six, eight, nine, ten trucks in here at a time to work on them. So they're not just working on the trucks, it's working they're on the trailers they're too. They're working the trucks, they're working the trailers, they're working on the refrigerated unit. They even have a truck wash and a special bay for washing out the inside of the trailers. This is also where the trucks get filled up. Trailers don't always immediately get unloaded when they arrive, so some of them have to be shuffled around on the grounds. That is the job of someone called the spotter. This spotter was really cool. He let me ride with him as he backed the trailer full of soda cups to the dock. Benny Keith knows that for them to be successful, their customers have to be successful. So they offer a variety of services to help their customers' business. Suppose the chef wants to make some menu changes and add new ingredients. Benny e. Keith has a commercial kitchen on site where the chef can come and test products. 
This allows the chef to find the best products for their needs or get inspired by new products. Benny Keith has a large, well-equipped training room for their own use, but they make it available to their customers so they have a space to host their training and events. They also offer services to their customers on quality testing, menu planning, cost tracking, marketing, management, uniforms, dishwashing, merchandising, ordering systems, and more. Benny Keith doesn't just supply food. They work with their customers to help their businesses be successful. There is even more going on, and we aren't going to try to cover it all. But we hope we gave you an understanding for what goes into managing the supply chain. We sure left with a whole new appreciation for the planning, investment, and work involved. The next time you are enjoying a delicious meal at your favorite restaurant, now you will know how the food got there. Thank you, Benny Keith, for the tour and for getting all the yummy food to my plate.